Hello, visitors to and denizens of the youtube -iverse. I'm John, your sociable hermit in the woods, and in this video, I'm going to cover how I make bread. Now, I should probably caveat that. There's a lot of really fancy bread recipes on the internet and on YouTube. You're going to find all kinds of things that are um, a lot more exotic than what I'm going to do here. But I've had some questions. Um, what I do is really uh, very, very simple. Uh, it only takes um, actual hands-on time, probably less than 10 minutes to make a loaf, um, you know, with a couple hours of waiting around. Um, and it's only uh, four ingredients. We're going to use flour, salt, yeast, and water. Uh, and if you want to get a little bit fancier, maybe we'll glaze things with a little bit of olive oil. Uh, but it works really well. It's tasty. It's what I normally do. And I had uh, some questions about how I make bread. So I'm going to go ahead and put it here and maybe you'll find it useful. All right. So uh, with that, let's get started. Okay. The first step is going to be to put three cups of all-purpose flour in a large bowl. Um, this bowl is quite large and I'm going to show why that's handy later. So three cups. One, two, three. Keep the flour out because you may need to add a little bit more flour if the dough comes out a little bit sticky. So three cups of flour. And then to that, we're going to add one and one half teaspoons of table salt. Touch over a teaspoon, a little bit more. There we go. Teaspoon and a half of salt. And now, you can just get a regular fork and blend that in. Stir that around. Okay. One tablespoon, I like to use a quick rising yeast for what I'm going to do here. So one tablespoon quick rising yeast. And then one and one half cups of warm water. Now warm means uh, warm to your skin. It should be warmer than body temperature, but not hot. You shouldn't be uncomfortable to stick your fingers in there, but it should definitely feel warm. One cup. And a half cup. And you notice I don't measure those really exactly. I don't get a half cup measured three times. You eyeball things. It's going to be pretty close. Okay. Now, um, take your yeast and water mix and give it a good stir with your fork. The reason you uh, stirred up your flour and salt first is so that you'd handle the dry ingredients with your fork before you did this. Otherwise, you've got a wet fork you're sticking in there making everything's all gummy. Okay. While you're doing this, the other thing to do is to turn your oven on. Okay. Don't turn your oven on at the temperature you're going to bake. At least for me, when I started trying to make bread, a lot of the time it didn't work very well. And the problem was it wasn't rising. I would just get these brick hard lumps that didn't rise. And it really came down to something very simple. It was not warm enough where I was trying to rise it. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make all this. We're actually gonna rise it in the oven. The oven is set very, very low. You can do this either on a gas oven. Um, I had one that actually had a bread proof setting or on an electric range, just set it really low. Um, and you know what? Suddenly your bread's going to come out really well. So the oven's already turned on low. Give your yeast and water a good stir. If you can leave your yeast and water for an extra couple of minutes, that will also help. It helps ensure that the yeast rehydrates and uh, is good and active. If you put it in too early, it's going to slow things down. So an extra minute or two at this step, will actually save you a lot of time later on. Okay, so that's had about 
a minute and a half or so. And now you can just pour this all in there. You can put it all in at once. Take your fork and just kind of scrape it around from the sides. Try to get it to where stuff doesn't stick and then work everything all in and together until it forms a uniform uh, uniform mass. And yeah, you see how some of the flowers splash there? That's why wearing a, a, an apron is useful for these early steps. Okay. okay, now you see how we're getting to this stage here where it's kind of flaky but hasn't glommed together. Now is when you go ahead and get your hands in there. And just start working it a little bit. So I said that a very large bowl was helpful. The reason a large bowl is helpful is because we can do all of this, including the little bit of kneading we have to do right here in the bowl. We don't have to make a mess of the table beyond a little bit of flour that splashed out. Um, and so this is uh, easy. It's all self-contained, especially if you have a small kitchen space like I have here. Um, this just helps keep the mess under control and makes everything easier. Okay, um, you do need to knead this, but don't go crazy. It doesn't take a lot of energy. Uh, you're not trying to squish the life out of it. You're just trying to mix it together and all told, it really only takes about a minute. Now, what you're judging at this point is the texture. It should be not quite sticking to your hands would be how I would describe it. If it's sticking to your hands, it's too moist and you need to add uh, a little bit more flour. And if it doesn't have any tendency to stick at all, um, it's probably a little too dry. And if it's a little too dry, in my experience, it won't necessarily rise very well. So there is kind of a happy medium there and it takes a couple of times doing it until you sort of learn what works for you. Okay, now, that's actually feeling a little bit sticky to me. But there's some flour in the sides of the bowl. Let me see if I can get that worked in. Really needs very little additional flour. Okay, that is still slightly sticky though. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more flour in there, but not very much. Use a spoon here. And we're getting literally just like about a teaspoon. I'm just going to coat my ball of dough, kind of roll it. There we go. That seems good. Yeah. Okay. Now the outer surface isn't sticky. So you've got your lump of dough there. And now all you want to do, you want to cover that with some plastic wrap so it doesn't dehydrate. Get yourself a, a, a little bit bigger piece than you think you'll need. You'll see why later. Okay. We set that over our dough. And now all we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to slide it over here into our pre-warmed, slightly warm oven. So there you go oven set somewhat below its lowest marked setting, uh, probably around 40 uh, Celsius. So, uh, you know, 110 Fahrenheit kind of range. And let that sit for about an hour. You'll want to check that starting in around 30 minutes because sometimes it surprises you like this time and it's already doubled in size, which is what we're looking for. So on to the next step. Okay, so once it's doubled in size, and that can be, like I said, anything from 30 minutes to a little over an hour, you take it out, peel off your chunk of plastic, which notice it didn't stick. That's because we had a little bit of flour on there. Set your plastic aside. And now what you want to do is what's called punching down. So basically, you're going to just re-knead this briefly. And again, we'll just stay right in the same bowl here, control the mess. You'll feel that the texture is quite different now. It's, uh, it's more elastic, it's more rubbery, it bounces back. The glutens are starting to uh, get partially digested by the yeast here, and it's, uh, it's turning into bread. 
sometimes you may find it's still, it wasn't sticky when you put it in, but it's become a little bit sticky at this stage. It's perfectly okay to uh, put a little bit of flour on the outside if you need to combat that. This one's just about perfect though. Again, this doesn't take much kneading. We're really only going to give this about a minute, maybe two minutes if we're really feeling energetic. But just kind of try to squish it around well. Oh, that looks good. Okay, now we have our uh, bread pan. This is a nonstick bread pan. The easiest thing to do is to just simply take your hunk of dough, drop it in the bed pan, and carry on from there. But I'm going to get a little bit fancier today. I'm going to use two other ingredients, which are optional. But um, I feel like using them today, and I'll explain what they're going to do. The first of those is a little bit of olive oil. Uh, it'll help the outside crust up a little bit harder, and it'll give it a nice smell. And to do that, what I actually do is pour that directly into the bread pan, and very little. I put in probably about a teaspoon there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my hands to coat the pan. That will also help it, uh, the bread to come out easier, but this is a nonstick pan. Even just plain bread dough comes out fine. Okay, so get that coated in all evenly. Now, take your loaf, and I like to work it out to about the length of the pan, pretty close, and sort of even and uniform. Pretty close there anyways. And there is definitely kind of a, not so good looking side and a nice looking side. What I'm gonna do now, if I was just gonna put this in there with no oil, I'd put it in nice side up. But I want to coat this with oil. So I'm actually gonna put it in nice side down and I'm gonna roll it. And so now it's covered with oil everywhere. And I'm gonna kind of squish it a little bit to, to, to stretch into the pan there. Okay, that squished in. I said I was gonna do another ingredient. I'm gonna go ahead today and put a little bit of rosemary flakes, dried rosemary on there. Um, it just smells nice. Uh, it gives a little bit of a nice appearance to the bread. When you go to cut it after it's baked, that will pretty much mostly fall off, but will it'll have left its smell. Okay, and you can do sesame seeds or some other herb, whatever you want there. Now I'm gonna take our slightly oversized piece of plastic and I'm just gonna set it on there. Now notice I'm doing that so it drapes up over the outside. So as the bread rises, it'll push the plastic up and out of the way because I don't wanna have to struggle with that. Okay, and now we're just gonna take that and we're gonna put it right back in the oven. So the oven is still just set at that low temperature to keep things warm. And I'm gonna slide it in and put it there. Leave it where you can get at it because the trick is gonna be, we're not gonna take it out of there. We're just gonna reach in and pull the plastic off when we wanna to go to the next step. Incidentally, if you didn't have a bread pan, or maybe you just wanted a different sort of shape of loaf, this same recipe works really well for making kind of baguette style or Subway loaf style uh, bread loaves. Instead of going into a regular bread pan at this point, break that first after your first rise and after your first kneading break that dough into two or three more or less even portions kind of roll them out um, into roughly cylindrical shapes put a little bit of flour um, dust a little bit of flour onto a cookie sheet and put them on there leave a fair bit of space between them otherwise they'll rise into each other and you'll end up kind of with a fused lump of bread um, and you can put them on there and bake them like that Everything else is the same, comes out really well. You could even get really fancy and do multiple small pieces and like interweave them kind of like a, a challah shaped loaf, um, although it wouldn't be an egg bread, so it's not challah. But the point is, this dough is very adaptable. You don't have to do plain ordinary bread like I'm doing today. You can shape that dough and use it however you want. So you want to keep an eye on it again, starting at around 20 to 30 minutes in and then checking every few minutes ideally without opening the oven door. Keep an eye on it, and when it gets to the height you want, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna reach in there, 
and we're going to uh, just peel the plastic off quickly and get the door closed right away. Okay, so it's raised as much as I want, and I'm not going to take it out of there where it has a chance to fall. I'm just going to reach in, slide off the plastic, just turn the temperature back up, took it to 400 Fahrenheit, and I'm going to give it 32 minutes. Your oven will probably vary a little bit. You'll want to play with that, but that's what works for me. We'll see it when it comes out. Well, time for the moment of truth. Ah, oh, and there we have it. One beautiful looking loaf of hermit bread. There we have it. Looks good. Sounds nicely hollow. Oh, and it smells like fresh bread and rosemary. So best to let that cool for a few minutes and then uh, cut a slice off and slather with some butter. I hope you enjoyed that and gave you some ideas. Until next time, this is John, the sociable hermit in the woods, signing off.